So our spread is pretty much ready for yearbook, but there's a couple things that are missing. Now, most of the time, if you're working on the yearbook, you will have been given a template that you're working with. So I have just opened one here, and you can see how this template actually has a folio here with a page number. It has some credits on it, and it has um, a, another page number up in here. Now, I can't select any of these because, as I alluded to in the very first video, if you look on pages, it's actually not on that page. It's, what's, it's on what's called the master page. So if you look on the master page, you can actually see that this is an A and an A down here because it's the A master and it's automatic. What that means is that if I go on the page, this is page 124, 125, and it shows up that way. If I add more pages to my spread, now this is 126, 127, and that number automatic, automatically shows up. So that's something to, to note. The other thing that you're going to get on a yearbook spread is you have something called a slug. Down here at the bottom of the page, there'll be information with your publishing information and so on. So there's a couple other elements to templates that you don't really need to worry about if you're creating pages because it's part of the setup, um, but you'll be given this kind of template. Now, we don't have all of this stuff here now on our yearbook page here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to copy some information. Now we want to end up, um, so we want to go in here, we want to go to our master page because that's where our things are, and I'm going to press Control A, and that's going to select everything, and I'm going to press Control C to copy it. Now when I go back to our own spread, now I don't want to put it onto my working page, I also want to put it on our master, so I'm going to double click on the master, so everything's gone away. Now if I just click paste, it would center it on the page, and that might or might not be the right place but I want it to be in exactly the same location as it was in my, my um, template. So I'm going to go paste in place and that will place those things exactly where they were here. And uh, we're going to go back to our page and now you can see it's our page number two um, and it says folio here and it has our page number three up in here. Now, if I know that this document uh, layout and numbering and section options, if I know that this document is going to be spread number, let's say uh, it's going to start at page with the even number on the left, it's going to be page 86 in the book, then I can say OK, and now it will change to page 86 at B7. That was layout, numbering, and section options. That changed that, right? Uh, now, I also want to change this folio because I wanted to say Japan trip, and I want to give myself credit. So I'm going to go to my pages. I'm going to go back to my master. I'm going to zoom in to here. So folio here, and now I can take my text tool and I can say Japan trip, Japan trip, and oops, not trop, but trip. And then with my hand, I can scroll over to the other side. This page brought to you by, and then your name here, and I'm going to go Reiner M. There we go. Uh, so that is my credit for my page. Now, if I double click back on my page and I go view, fit spread in window, um, now I've got my credit down in here. I've got my folio in here and up and top. So I'm pretty happy with that. There was a couple other things that I wanted to do. If you look back to the example spread, we had a rounded corners on, on these boxes. I'm going to show you how to do that next. I'm also going to show you how to give boxes a stroke. Uh, whether or not you want that um, depends on your layout that you're looking for, but I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to zoom in just on, on this box here. So what I want to create is I want to get rounded corners. Now, if you select the photo box, uh, you actually uh, get some tools for rounded corners um, on your toolbar, depending on your screen the resolution and whatnot. Uh, but I'm going to do the, the modern way, so you, which is uh, anything from Creative Cloud onward, CS5. Still shows a dialog box up here on how to change the, the margins, but you won't find that on these ones. So all you do is click on the little box here, and now you get a diamond. Now, if I pick up a diamond and drag it in, you can see it rounds all the corners. Now, the rounded corners, that's not bad for, uh, for this image on this side, but I don't want rounded corners on the inside. So if I hold down my Shift key, then I can actually pick up each corner by itself and I can take away the rounded corners here. So I want to do that. I also want to take a rounded corner on this one. So I'm going to click on the box, hold down my shift key and just bring in a rounded corner on that corner. 
and I want to do the same thing on this box, but it's covered by my text box. So again, if I hold down my shift and I click, then I can actually select underneath. So um, actually it's my control key. So I hold down control and I clicked again and it dug out to the different layers. So now I can click on the little box, hold down my shift key and drag that in to get a rounded corner on that one as well. And I also want a rounded corner on my big text box. So I got, a, I mean my big uh, red box. So this one though, I'm good with using one corner and pulling all sides in. So now I get a nice rounded corner on all of these. So that's pretty good. The last thing I want to do is show you how to put a stroke. Now in some images, if they're very light, um, you might want a stroke so you can see where the edge is. For example, in this image here, if we go into our preview mode, you can see there's almost no, no separation between the image and the background. Now you want to be consistent about strokes. You don't want to put one stroke on one image and not on another. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So are you, I'm going to select it and then I can go up in here in my stroke color and I'm going to give it a black stroke. And right now it's set up automatically at the one point, but maybe I just want a really small one. So I can make that a quarter. So very, very fine hairline. Looks pretty good. Um, if it's that fine, you might get away with not having it on the other ones, uh, but you might want to apply it to all of your images. So again, you can select a whole bunch of images at the same time, do the same thing. It gives you here uh, a little question mark because some have a stroke, some don't. So again, I'm going to go black and a quarter and I'm going to apply it to all of them. So it's a subtle thing, but it's something you want to think about and maybe decide before you even start the, uh, the design of the yearbook whether or not your, your box should have a stroke or not. Um, to me, it looks like the red box down here, for example, it does have a, a black stroke. Now, I don't know if I want a black stroke on this one, so I'm going to get rid of the, the black stroke on this one altogether. So I can also get rid of strokes. So that's just a, a quite quick, quick little um, tweak, and I've gotten rid of my grid, uh, but I want to go into the presentation mode so I can, again, I can see the whole spread. So looking at this, I've got my page numbers, I've got nice spacing, I have my folio and my credits, so I think that looks uh, good. And again, hit escape, and we are done with our yearbook spread. I go view, fit spread in window, will give us a view of all of that. Now, there are some other tricks uh, that you can do with, with fancy images, and there's another video for that, but we won't worry about that for now. So, good, congratulations, you've completed your first yearbook spread.